Hello! Uh, today's project, uh, well, probably the next couple days, I guess. Uh, we're working on my 1972 Mercedes 250. Um, it's got an M104 swap into it, a 3 liter version. Uh, it previously had K Jet running on it, uh, you know, full mechanical fuel injection, fuel distributor, warm up regulator, and still using the EZL. Um, I couldn't get the fueling to be tuned quite right on it, so I made the choice to just leave the ECL, EZL as an ignition controller standalone thing for now, um, and then just use a fuel only version of like Mega Squirt. So we got a fuel rail from an M104 fuel injected in there, um, and we're gonna do some light wiring. Uh, I have some harnesses laying around that I stole the injector plugs from. Uh, and then we'll just have to wire up that and a TPS sensor and weld in an O2 sensor. I have a little section already made for that, so it should be pretty minimal. I, I'm not a big fan of having you know, a ton of wires on this car. I kind of wanted to have it all be contained and mechanical, but I would like to drive it more than watch it sit. So that's what we're going to be working on. Eventually needs to put the headliner in it too, so maybe I'll film some of that. If I'm feeling ambitious, but really I'd like to just get it moving and driving better than it does currently. So we're going to do that. Okay, first order of business, I guess. Open power bar. Ta-da. So the first thing that I need to do, well, I don't know if it's the first thing, but what I'm going to do first is this fuel rail is just kind of pushed into the injector cups right now. I'd like to have at least like two hold down points to it. Um, so there's a couple tapped holes here and in the back. So I'm thinking maybe if I just make uh, some type of wraparound connector that I can put a bolt through and pinch it on one side with like some rubber on the inside of it and then bolt it to the head, it should be fine. So I don't really want to weld to that. I don't have a TIG welder and I don't want to ruin it. So we're going to try that. So I'm going to do that first, I think. If I've got enough scrap laying around. And then once that's physically mounted, uh, we can start trying to figure out where we want to put wires and all that jazz. So I guess I'm going to do that. Albeit a bit crude, I made this little mount. I, mean, I think I can just cut it in half. So it just kind of slips around here. You catch a bolt on the head. Throw uh, two holes in it. Call it good. Uh, you know, paint it. Put some rubber in the inside. Probably an old gradiator hose, but it'll work. So just need two of them. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty easy. Okay, we've got prototype one ready. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, it's uh, pretty simple, but it seems to be effective. I can't really wiggle it. I'm gonna do two of them. Yeah, I just uh, I just cut some hose roughly. I'm gonna make it look, you know, fit the size of the strap. Um, but the bolt holes are good, uh, and it kind of lines up. I think, I'm thinking I'm gonna do another one, probably back here, and that should be that. So yeah, keep doing that. Okay, well we got the mounts made, got those put in there. Uh, so one in the back, one in the front, I don't know, it's back there somewhere. But uh, I've got the harness for the injectors laid out. I poked a hole right back there. Uh, found a huge mouse nest under the, uh, or on top of the kick panel, which explains why it stinks in there. I thought I got all of them out when I bought it. Uh, most of them were in the headliner, but a lot of the headliner insulation was gone, so it had to be somewhere. And I think I found it. So. <sighs> Sorry, as I was saying, I poked a little hole down here uh, to run a wire through, found a mouse nest, cleaned it out. This is where all the headliner insulation was. So I'm gonna try to fish it through back there. Um, and yeah, we'll see if I can get past my tripod. Oh, oh.
Okay, I think this should be most of it. Uh, injector bank A and B. Uh, we'll control these injectors on batch fire. Um, TPS wire and a the O2 signal wire. Uh, 5 volt reference for the TPS and a bunch of grounds. I think that should be it. Um, yeah, so most of these I had a you know an M113 harness laying around and those had the same size injector clips so I just cut it up because it was a my old SLC harness which was also mega squirt which is not mega squirt anymore so it was already butchered <laughs> so I just cut off six connectors uh, you need to find one more clip for this guy but we'll get there um, and yeah so I suppose some wiring shall commence. I don't know, it should be pretty straightforward. So yeah, we'll get doing that. So I first step here is I know these are all the power for the injectors, um, but they're the same color on each wire, I guess. So just need to, at once upon a time, I knew which side was hot and which side was, you know, switch side. Uh, so I need to just do a quick chirp test. be good. The other two aren't a part of that harness because I just locked them off wherever. So we will tie those into the power source here in some way. I don't know what way, but so I think it's okay that they all share the same power. Uh, if not, I was going to do one, three, five, and two, four, six. So I think if they all have the same power, it's fine. It's just you just switch off the ground or whatever. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let's do some wiring. Okay, so what I'm doing here, uh, I had an open fuse holder, and this is like a 12 volt. Oh man, this is a 12 volt supply from you know battery alternator, or whatever. So I just took a lead and put it to that open fuse there, and then that can be used for our injector power we'll still need a main power fuse uh, but I think I'm gonna steal something from on the other side of the car there's uh, some other fuse holders well that should be fine I don't know what do we think 15 amp my little fuse holder here I'm thinking, just, I like to use these Mercedes holders, and then they get a little mount in it, so we can do a little cut a little square out here. My die grinder, and it'll just go right in there. So I think for this, we can just turn the the feed right to it. That should be good. Lose that thing.
need some liquid inspiration. So much for that. I guess we gotta go uh, get one from the parts mule. I guess I'll go do that. Okay, we installed a little relay there. I found the sweet little holder from the 220D parts car outside. That's just a one singular relay that, you know, uh, female that you could plug the male in and it already had a threaded hole on it so you could just do a through bolt on something it's pretty sweet uh, unreasonably excited about that but it is so I think um, I'm debating I've got that relay over there and then I did the uh, replace that box and have the other relay over here I don't know which one I want to be main power or not I wish they could both be over on the other side but I only got one fuse that was open on that side, so, um, and same for this side. So we'll just have to run one long one along the back there in that big loom anyways. So I think we're going to do that next. Okay, well I hate wiring, but that's pretty much done over there. It's got to hook up the ground, clean up the rat's nest, but that's later. So I'll come back to you guys when we're back starting to do the Mega Squirt to injector wiring. Okay, it is a new day. Um, most of the wiring under the hood is wrapped up. Uh, I'll show you that um, in a little bit later. But right now I'm going to take a break from wiring, raise it up, and... Uh, We'll weld in the section that I have an O2 bung already in. Weld it in the exhaust and fix the exhaust. Uh, there's a terrible section in it that I tried to like a pipe expand and slip fit and it just never sealed right. So um, see if what we can scavenge up and just make it one piece. Uh, now that I know the engine doesn't need to come out anytime soon, knock on wood. So uh, I wish it could be two pieces, but it's kind of hard to make that work. So uh, yeah, we're going to raise it up and Work underneath it for a bit. Do some mechanical work instead of electrical. <laughs> this car has the best antenna of anything that I own. It's about eight or nine feet long, fully extended, and just whips backwards going down the road and it always stabs through the ceiling so there's like i'm looking right now i can see from when i did the engine swap on this there's like 10 holes or something in the ceiling just the perfect shape of that antenna poking through anyways that is that let's uh get under here okay we're under here what i have to do is blast a hole in the exhaust and weld up a bung which i've already boogered some on there so we should be all right but yeah uh, I'm thinking about maybe trying to redo the whole back half because it's pretty rotten so we might just wait that out until we get it running again and then I don't want to listen to the drone for hours and hours so then I'll come back and maybe do a two into one or something I don't know we'll figure it out though um, but yeah so I'm just going to finish welding that bung up and then we should be good okay so some things have transpired uh, got the wiring figured out gonna tidy that up I'll show that part um, but I need turned out I was having a heck of a time getting it to run right um, that O2 sensor so yeah now it just sits here and purrs idles perfectly at stoic um, the fan stopped working but you know we'll figure that out so here it is uh, 
Yeah, pretty happy with this. Kind of a random video, just trying to get this thing a new lease on life. I uh, did the swap sometime last year, um, but I decided to go with just fuel only, mega squirt fuel injection to get it just right, and it dries really good now. Um, so yeah, more on this car to come in this video, just probably a driving video, and then buttoning up the wiring, you know, cleaning it up, making it look good, and we'll go on and enjoy it for the rest of the season. All right, we're threading a new headliner in there. Uh, one of the things I need to do right now, I'm just getting the, I already fed the, the bars in, inside the house where it's clean. And now we're just kind of getting them in there and then we can assess how we want to go about uh, getting uh, kind of glued around the edge and stuff and tucked under the headliner. So we're gonna do that. Okay, well I think we've got this thing pretty much licked. Um, got the wiring all loomed up with some Tessa tape and put the headliner in. Headliner was a major pain in the butt. Would not recommend using a Turkish supplier with cheap headliners on eBay. The cheap price is too good, but it's also too good to be true. But nonetheless, there is a headliner in there that looks mediocre. So yeah, I think that's probably it for this. Um, oh, I did throw some upper control arm bushings in at it. Uh, the driver's side was really worn. It caused a shake in the wheel. They kind of make like a chattering noise when you brake and you can feel it pull you to one side. So I got that fixed, but just did both sides. Uh, I don't really want to do the lowers. You got to pull the spring up. But anyways, uh, yeah, we're going to back this sucker out of here and take it for a drive. <laughs> 